I wouldn't admit it for a number of years, I kept it fairly quiet, but now most people accept it. It's cool. Well, I wouldn't say it's cool now. There's nothing like a nice, bright, shiny new tractor to catch a farmer's attention. And for once, size really doesn't matter. Just in the blood, I can't get rid of tractors. I'm more likely to walk into a tractor dealer's than into a car showroom. You know, Massey's, Spence, John Deere's, they do it for me. Whenever my wife and I were going in to buy Christmas presents and birthday presents for the children, my wife would be way off buying the, ch the things for the children, but I would be way off with the tractors. And my wife said to me, look, go ahead, catch yourself on, you know, and collect the things. It actually took me one day when I was in a local news agency and I picked up a tractor magazine. I thought, goodness, there must be other like-minded people out there, and that's what started me. And off I went. <laughs> I haven't stopped since. Keith, could you make your way up to the main hall? Not content with just collecting, four years ago Alistair Bell organised the first Northern Ireland farm toy and model show in his hometown of Portrush, County Antrim. You going to be busy, boy? All right. When you think of wacky conventions, you might think Star Trek or Dungeons and Dragons. But here, the crowds are enthralled to the tiny tractor. Did you ever see a tractor? Did you ever see a tractor pull? Pulling on a plow way down on the farm. This here is an Aladdin's Cave stroke mecca for tractor collectors. It's an all-Ireland event with people, I have the phone ringing this week. It's been hot, Calvin, Tipperary, from all parts, Donegal, never mind even just these six counties up here, it has been crazy. So crazy, in fact, that almost 2,000 people showed up this year. I myself am a John Deere fanatic, so I have between 450 and 500 John Deere models. So, um, that aren't for sale. That aren't for sale. Why are you here? To look at Christmas boxes for other members of the family, principally, and to see what's new in the market. You're, you're blaming the other, the rest um, of the family that's now. That's an excuse to get here. <laughs> <laughs> do you, you collect some machines. Yeah, I do. I have a collection of uh, farm toys myself. And you're never too big, like to collect. Started when I was six, seven, and then stopped when you get to the the 13, 14, 15, and afraid to admit it, and then got back into it again in later years. What is the extent of your collection now? Uh, that's a secret. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a good few models. Yeah, it's, Can we uh, guess that there's probably a whole room in a house dedicated to these? There, there is a room, yeah, that's half of these models, yeah. Many of the exhibitors, not content with what's on sale in the mainstream, customise their own tractors. I started buying them at a young age and then started converting them. Converting them? Mm -hmm. What do you mean converting them? Like building two models into one and making a better one. What's the advantage of putting two things together? Is that like a one-off machine then, uh -huh. is it? Uh, some you can't get anywhere in the world, you know, yeah. if you make, so um, yeah, and there's more money as well. Andrew's younger brother David is in on the act as well. Gets you a bit of money in your pocket and that's all, really. Are, are you interested in farm machinery yourself? Oh, I we live on a chicken and beef farm, so we do. So what kind of tractors or machinery do you oh, have there? Oh, John Deere only. And it's not just the youngsters that have caught the bug. When I started, I wanted models we had on the farm that no one else had. So we decided to start converting things and build them that way. Is this a full-time business for you now? Seven days a week, 12 hours a day at least. Sometimes we work through the night. The plough there is extraordinary. That's amazing. Even the little bolts are coloured in in gold, each individual bolt. They're yeah, proper bolts. <laughs> are they? Yeah. Uh, and are they made out of plastic or brass? The or brass. What? It's all brass. Wow. Apart from the tyre and the hoses, everything's brass. I don't know how many parts there are in this one, but I've got the 5 for one tucked in the box there. It has about 1,500 separate parts in it. Oh, there's a 21-hour 21 21 hour job to build that. Bloody hell. Tell me now, you've got plastic, metal, and rubber. Brass, yeah. And you can kind of buy these little wheels, yeah, you self. Can buy them wheels, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How long have you been at it now? I've been building models 25 years, but I've only been full-time on it now about a year and a half. With such an amount of machinery on sale, people need somewhere to put it. John Robinson builds model farmyards from scratch. It's beautiful. It's all made out of uh, timber, and mm. you've got little uh, metal frames here and gates. Steel kits and, and all, And they all yes. work. And all work. It is, no, it is. 
realistic. There's no doubt about it. It looks apart and the doors stays and the gate something and children loves it. Uh, would I be right in thinking this is pretty much the most profitable end of farming at this point in time? At this present moment then it is, yes. Some enthusiasts build even more elaborate layouts that extend to full farms. Tell me about what we're looking at here. This is like rotivating, cultivating and sowing out barley. Okay, so this is like a fresh field where they're yep. sowing and ploughing and yep. planting, yeah. And the machinery shade. That's where he's storing all the machinery, yeah? Yep. And what's this one nearest us here? This is a silo pit, like rolling the pit and putting on And you've silage. actually kind of almost got silage in the pit, haven't you? Yeah. There are countless reasons why people like to have model tractors. It evokes memories. Um, romanticism comes back into it. We have people that buy for a 60th birthday present or a retirement present. It's nice to have them in models now. You can look back and say, well, I drove that tractor. It was on my farm and it means so much more. It's not just the collecting of them. It's the fact that you have spent a lot of your time with those tractors in your earlier days. There's also a fantasy element to all of this. They can realise some of their dreams and tractors that they would, wouldn't be able to buy in reality. Because they're too and expensive. Because they're too expensive. And you can have a tractor here that would be 260 or 300 horsepower in real life that you would normally see a contractor driving by or a really big farmer. And would cost maybe 200,000 euros easily, to buy. Easily, yeah. I ain't no closing time. I ain't no cover charge. Just country boys and girls getting down on the bar. Here in Port Rush, you can own your own dream tractor for as little as 30 euro. But if you're really set on splashing the cash, you can get a collector's item for as much as 350 euro. There is a lot of money that changes hands, and that is why we've found that more of the local farm machinery companies have been interested to come along and take part in it. When they saw what was going on, they realized, hang on a minute, this isn't just a good opportunity to sell toys and models and clothing. It's also a great opportunity for the farm machinery companies to meet their customers. In fact, business here at the Northern Ireland Farm Toy and Model Show has never been better. We thought it would get quiet even in the recession. We're busier now than we were two years ago. Um, the demand has just got bigger and bigger. It's hard to believe how passionate some of these people are about their models. Some of them will come for miles and miles, hours of driving to get here. The diehards are in here early because they know if they want to get the tractor thereafter, you've got to be at Fort Rush quick.